What's up, everyone? My name is Tyler. You are watching Mom's Basement MMA, and I have a good friend joining me today. His name's Josh Augustine. He's a featherweight from St. Louis. He trains out of Extreme Couture MMA in Las Vegas, Nevada. Josh, welcome to the program, sir. Always a pleasure to have a uh, familiar face uh, pulling back up for, I don't know, this is probably like our 20th one of these. Yeah, thank you for having me back on, Tyler. It feels good to be a uh, reoccurring guest on the show, watching you grow as I grow. It's been been really cool. I wanted to kick off our conversation actually talking about one of your teammates because I think there might be a parallel here. Uh, Vanessa Demopoulos, she was on um, an interview recently. Someone was interviewing her, and she said that she relocated. She started training out of Extreme Couture MMA, and it's made a huge difference in her development as a fighter. She talked about the coaching. She talked about the teammates. She talked about the Performance Institute being right there and how it's been instrumental for her. Do you feel, do you agree with that? Like, has that had like a similar impact for you and your development at this stage in your career? Oh, 1000%. Um, and I mean, just on a side note, Vanessa's like literally right there. Um, and That's we're, awkward. We're, and yeah, that was not planned. Here. Yeah, it's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, but I 100% agree. I mean, yeah, the PI is 10 minutes away from here. And honestly, everyone has a story. Everyone was the best person in their town and then came here and, you know, and had to figure it out because it's just a whole nother level out here. And, um, you know, it's, it's a bunch of people that have come together and are trying to make the most out of all the opportunities that we have. Everyone's smart, um, with the way that they train, um, as far as like not injuring each other and stuff for the most part, um, because everyone's got to get these paychecks. Everyone's got a, everyone's got fights coming up and, you know, it's, uh, it's a really special place and a really special thing to be a part of. Um, I think it really is the pinnacle of the sport right now, being out here and being able to train with all these guys. Can you tell me, Josh, like you've been at Extreme for a little over a year now. Like, What were some of the biggest things in your game that you've been working on for the better part of the past 12 to 18 months to get a little bit uh, more well-rounded, so to speak? Grappling. My grappling has gone through the roof. Uh, my wrestling ability, wrestling defense, and my wrestling offense. Uh, my jiu-jitsu. Um, and just honestly putting it all together, putting my striking in with my wrestling and, um, and just using my athletic ability, um, you know, to be able to do certain things, um, and just learning how to hone all the skills. Uh, one thing out here is they don't really like shape your game one way or the other or turn you into anything, but they do make you better at what you do. Um, and, uh, that's all credit to Dennis Davis, Eric Nixick, um, all the coaches over here. There's so many coaches. I don't want, want to leave anybody out. Yeah, we got everybody. Man, we got everybody. Jake Shields, everybody. You remind me a little bit of a guy that was recently on my show. His name is Damon Wilson. He's a featherweight contender from Alliance MMA in San Diego. So just like you, uh, you're talking about a guy with between eight and ten fights, and he's done really well. He's in his early 30s, and he was just telling me he's like, you know what? Like, I feel like I'm primed. I'm ready to go, and like mentally, physically, I feel. Like I'm just hitting new levels. And when I see all of these fights, when I see the UFC schedule and they're just putting out all these events, he's like, dude, I feel like I'm hitting my prime at like the perfect time. And I was just kind of curious. I'm sure you identify with maybe some of the things that he said. Do you kind of feel somewhat similar to that? 1000%. I don't have uh, too many miles on my body. I'm not banged up. And like, I still have the drive to want to do this and want to be in it every day and, and give everything into it. Um, so yeah, I feel honestly the exact same way. And with this, with this fight coming up, I think that it's going to be perfect. I think that, um, this is the perfect time. I think he's a little older. I think he's had a lot of fights and, um, you know, I'm just looking for my opportunity to get to get to the door and through the door. Um, I've been there a couple of times and, you know, like you said, that like, I'm just starting to scratch the surface of my prime. And being out here with this team and being able to hone my skills as well as entering my physical prime, um, it's, it is it is the perfect time. And I'm really looking forward to this matchup. You know, I feel like this is um, the biggest opportunity in my career and also um, not the hardest fight that I've had. So it's... Uh, it's a great opportunity for me. I'm really looking forward to it. Josh, tell me a little bit about um, the fight offer in and of itself. Samurai MMA 10, that's going to be happening in Montreal, Canada, for people who aren't familiar. It's a relatively new promotion, but you're talking about a promotion that is kind of a big deal in Canada. You're mm -hmm. the type of guy, I'm sure you get offers from promotions all over the country. 
Um, mm. But in this case, you're fighting outside of the country. When this fight offer came in, what was it about the offer in and of itself that made you say yes? Um, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, I do get a lot of fight offers. I had I had quite a few offers on the table. We were kind of trying to cipher through what would be the best option for me. And um, yeah, the biggest thing was the challenge. The challenge of going out of the country and fighting the number one guy in Canada who's had he has twice as many fights as me, he has twice as many wins and twice as many losses. Um, you know, I don't take him having 10 more fights than me lightly at all. I think that's a huge factor in this fight. Uh, but I do look forward to that challenge. I look forward to the challenge of going out of the country and going into his backyard and fighting him. Um, I look forward to the stylistic matchup. I've never fought a guy that is a high level Muay Thai guy um, in, in MMA. I've had Muay Thai fights and I've had, you know, decent uh, level Muay Thai fights, but I haven't had a uh, high level, you know, pro MMA fight against another high level Muay Thai guy. And, and people know me for my striking um, in this fight. I think that I'm going to be able to really show that striking off against him. Um, but I'm looking to show off all of my skills, all of my well-rounded skills that we've been talking about. Speaking of which, here's the guy. Say hi to Mom's Basement MMA. What's up? How are you guys? Oh, what, what, what's up, Coach? How are you doing? Doing well, brother. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. You're gonna be. Uh, we're gonna leave you in this episode, Eric. So. Yeah. Hey, you got me and my boy Dan Ege. There we go. You got him. There all. we go. Fifty k. <laughs> we're gonna leave you guys in there. All right. All right, perfect. brother. Nice talking to you, my man. Th thanks, Coach. <laughs> all right, we're leaving that shit in there. Anyway, we're moving on with the interview. Uh, what do we do. Josh, I want to uh, talk a little bit about Alex, your opponent. Like, I look at this guy, and like you, a tall guy, he has made a name for himself with his striking. I see some similarities when I watch him fight. I watch you fight. Do you like? But what are the biggest differences in your game and in your opponent's game? Like, where where do you think you are going to have the biggest advantage over Morgan? Uh, without getting too much into the details, I think that I'm just going to have better boxing, faster hands, uh, better head movement, more athletic ability. I think the youth is going to be my friend. Um, he's ha he has more miles on his body. He's a little older than me. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that my speed is going to be a huge advantage in this fight, but, um, you know, like I said, I I'm looking to show how well-rounded I am. I'm looking to, I'm looking to, um, Obviously, if I'm winning the striking exchanges and, and I'm able to put them away early, it's going to be nice. But I am uh, I want to show what Extreme Couture is all about, and we got all the best guys in every area of the sport. Um, and I think that I'm going to really be able to show off uh, some new new abilities that I haven't showed off before. You're a guy that's like developed a reputation for getting guys out of there pretty quick. And from an op from an opposing viewpoint, you might be kind of hard to game plan against because it's like, man, this guy's fights don't really last a whole heck of a long time. Are there like some tricks you have up your sleeve? Are there other elements of your game that just we haven't seen yet because some of your fights are ending so quickly? Yeah, I mean, my whole game is based around having an effective, uh, dangerous MMA style. Um, I think that's going to be also, you know, a main component is Alex is very technical, um, but he doesn't really hurt people. Um, I go out there to really damage people. I go out there to destroy people and hurt them and, and make them never want to be in there with me and never think they have a chance with me. Um, and I think he's going to feel that. I think he's going to feel that early in the fight. And honestly, I'm expecting it not to shake his confidence. I'm expecting, I'm expecting to be in there for 15 minutes and us fighting like fucking animals and having a fight of a year type, type situation. And I'm going to earn my spot in the UFC that way. Um, because I know that I'm willing to give everything that I got. I know that I'm willing. I'm in a position now and I see the opportunity at hand and I'm ready to give it all. But um, I'm not really sure that he's able to go 15 minutes like that. You have been fighting in St. Louis for a bulk of your career. Like You've been like that hometown guy. Everyone buys the tickets from. Everyone shows up. Everyone is there to watch you fight. Now it's like the complete opposite. Nobody's asking you to sell tickets. Most people there probably don't know who you are. They want Morgan to win. Is that kind of nice for a change? Do you feel like all the pressure is on Morgan and you can just like, hey, man, I'm coming in there to do my job. And, you know, you don't have to like me going in, but you will respect me when I walk out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice. Honestly, none of that stuff plays too much of a factor. I don't think it's too, too important, like on fight night. Um, unless you like let it build, like make you build confidence or you let it like shake you a little bit. 
but it doesn't really actually affect the fight much. Um, it will be nice to not have to like sell a bunch of tickets and be in the logistics the hours before. But um, what's up, brother? Um, but I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not like happy or mad or or whatever about it. Like I could go either way. I, I kind of enjoy the hometown thing. I like having all the fans and like everyone being there cheering you on. Like I think that's really exciting and fun. But it's also exciting that I get to go in to enemy territory and hear all the boos and like I get to like play with them a little bit and call them communists and stuff like that. It, you know, and uh, tell them they don't have their their First Amendment and sh- so they should shut their fucking mouths shit like that like i think that will be really fun well they don't have amendments they're 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 in canada well they don't have the right to speak or whatever they can't fucking speak their mind they can't say that uh, their health care is bullshit or their prime ministers whatever else their bank accounts will get frozen in any event uh, yeah, i hope they let a... me in still <laughs> yeah this is an mma show kid in canada. <laughs> we love you canada we love you canada josh i did want to briefly hit on for a lot of people it's going to be exposure to a new fighter people they've never seen fight before there can be a lot of canadians i'd imagine tuning in from all over that country canada is obviously like a huge country for people who've never seen you fight before what can they expect um come fight night fireworks absolute fireworks it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a scrap that's for damn sure i'm coming out there excited to fight not to like grab some legs and hold on and like do nothing like we're going to fight whether he wants to or not we're gonna fight well ladies and gentlemen you heard him you heard it from the man himself june 21st make sure you tune in samurai mma 10 that will be live and available worldwide ufc fight pass josh if there's anyone that you need to thank any sponsors you need to talk about before i let you go let's do it my man thank you to all my sponsors um everybody everybody you all know who you are um seamless a's gutters total roofing um Reset St. Louis, Golden Toad Tattoo St. Louis, um, Field Box. We got um, we got two car guys. We got um, I think that's it. Shorty Shorty Inc. Too. Oh, Shorty Shorty Foundation. Yes, we got the Shorty Foundation. Don't forget about that guy. He's the best. Um, and that's it, I think. Actually, if I forgot anyone, I'm sorry, guys. Um, I get hit in the head a lot. We're here to get punched a little more. It's third practice today. But, uh, yeah, I got to thank you, Tyler. Thank you for having me on, man. It's been so awesome to watch your show grow. And, you know, I'm just grateful to be a part of it and and be able to, you know, come on. There we go. Josh, appreciate your time. Have a great practice. And we'll we'll talk again soon. All right, brother. Love you. Thank you.